Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JRD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius and Charles. Because today is the 20th of April, 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest, the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, let's quickly have a quick, by the way, quick reminder of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JD Bank website, and specifically our JD research page, which we update on a daily basis as well. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. So now then, um, also, just a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Um, the figure that you saw previously was the U.S. one. Um, now let's let's see what's happening globally. So, glo today this morning we were around two uh, two million four hundred and four, so roughly around there. So basically, not a huge increase, so which is fine, which is great. Um, so hopefully this number can continue to slow down. Um, uh, but yep, for now the total amount of deaths um, is is still kind of slowly rising. So yep, uh, probably will will continue rising as well. But hopefully the the whole the total amount of people in getting infected will uh, will slow down. So. Uh, let's jump into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on, touch on here is the German DAX. Now, uh, this morning I talked about this level here. I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on it because the price, the cash price, uh, the cash index, um, the futures market was uh, around there near the 10,700 or slightly above that. But this morning we're seeing a, a bit of a decline here again. And uh, well, I mean, uh, looking at this picture here, yes, it is declining. However, it's still on the positive side the f is the fact that we remain above this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March. Now, what I was mentioning uh, to you this morning was that in a way for us to get excited about the downside here, in, at least in the near term, we would like to see a drop below that psychological 10,000 zone. Until then, uh, we will remain a little bit cautiously bullish as long as the um, the price remains above this upside line but if this upside line gets broken then yep we'll take a bit of a neutral stance here uh, and uh, yep in order to aim for lower levels we need to see a drop below that uh, psychological 10,000 zone in a way with the upside also the same I same idea remains we need to see a push above the the high of last week near the 10,820 zone and then yep we could consider some higher level the S&P 500. Now, here, uh, the, uh, the on Friday, on Friday, the index uh, managed to close nicely here in the um, in the positive territory, and uh, we saw the kind of the uh, the the most important thing here is that um, that it, it started climbing higher further north um, towards our n next potential target here near the 2,901 territory. Um, slight. Uh, what I've covered this one previously I've mentioned to you guys that in a way if this continues to push higher here then the next potential target is around the uh, 2935 territory which is around the 61.8 percent retracement on the Fibonacci now um, it's for now I mean as it closed on Friday it seemed that yes there could be a chance for this one to drift higher however looking at the cash index right now uh, we can see that the um, the price is currently balancing at around, at around 2,820 territory. So basically, it's it's slightly below 
it's slightly below the um, the Friday's close, uh, but still above this uh, short-term upside support line ticket from the low of the 23rd of March. So in a way, um, there is still a bit of hope here for the uh, for the buyers. Um, so basically, we will consider something like this as a potential scenario. So yep, keep your eyes on this one. And uh, yep, if we uh, if we do get a nice rebound from this upside line, then yep, we could start aiming for the uh, this this 61.8 percent retracement on the Fibonacci and the um, and of course the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, in terms of the downside, we as I've mentioned previously as well, uh, in order to kind of get comfortable with the downside, we will, will well we would ideally prefer to see a drop below the 2,637 zone. However, um, given that we have moved a little bit further to the right now. What we're going to do here is we're going to probably start considering the downside if we get a drop somewhere below the uh, 2,729 territory. And just let me remind you, this one's level. This level is kind of coming back here from uh, J June 2019. Uh, that's the lowest point of June 2019. So basically, if we get a nice drop below this 2,729 zone, then yes, we will uh, aim for maybe we'll start. Con let's let's put it this way: we'll start considering. The the uh, slightly lower levels here. For now, uh, as long as it stays above the subside line, then yes, uh, we will remain cautiously bullish. WTI oil. So um, this is what I was talking about this morning. So basically, the, the spotlight fell today on oil, and of course, for obvious reasons, we understand why. So basically, oil has drifted all the way here, and let me just show you what this is. What I was talking about this morning, guys. Basically, oil has moved all the way here. Um, almost, almost, it went to the lowest point of uh, two, uh, sorry, 2000, 1998. Um, we've managed to overcome the uh, some of these lows here, like for example, uh, the low of April, uh, the lowest point of April, 1999. Um, then it it also drifted uh, below the. And let me just quickly capture this one. It drifted uh, towards the, um, or should I say, even below the uh, the high of January 1999, uh, and that level is um, roughly around here, basically around the. Um, 13 is it let me just quickly double check this guys because again these levels are that we're hitting right now at 1375 so of course that that got broken the price right now is currently balancing around 11.80 zone so basically yep I mean looking at this monthly chart you can see how uh, significant the slide is now the big question here is can we reach can we reach the lowest point of 1998? And if so, then another question is, can we actually travel all the way here towards the lowest point of um, 1986, basically? 1986, and let me just probably zoom here a little bit. So 1986 was around here, and that's the lowest point is around 9.75, guys. So basically, that's the level to watch as well, because again, for now, I mean, looking at this picture, just a week ago, we were uh, balancing around the uh, $20 mark. Now we are kind of almost testing the $10 mark. So basically, yep, it's these are very exciting times to to live through because, again, historic lows like these. I mean, that's that's a bit, that's well, that's something 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 really really interesting. If I can. Uh, put it this way but yep guys for now probably don't rush into this yet I mean we're keeping close eye on this we um, however of course don't get me wrong these levels are very attractive um, let's see how this is gonna play out but um, yeah the main question right now is can we reach the lowest point of 1998 which is around 10.65 zone so let me just quickly uh, capture this one yes that's 10.65 so uh, let's see if we can reach that level for now now I think it seems that everything can be possible. It's only about uh, one dollar away here from that, from hitting that level. So, uh, yep, let's see if we can reach that today, or maybe even tomorrow, or maybe even this week. So for now, again, guys, uh, it's 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 just one-way traffic, um, and uh, yep, we're waiting for, to see where will this uh, reversal level, uh, where where will where will this reversal uh, reversal happen to the upside. So again, for now, it's very tricky.
Um, Bitcoin. So haven't looked at this this one for quite a while. And while I'm on the monthly chart, you can see this activity. Um, so basically, overall, the um, the kind of the crypto is stuck between some of these lines. Now it's it's stuck below this downside line here, taken from the high of the uh, highest point of December 2017. It's when that we had that spike, and of course. Uh, we're stuck above this upside line here. Let me just uh, now. This one is a bit tentative. Um, again, we're not going to focus on this too much because, as you can see, we, we if we draw it this way, we did have an overshoot here already. So, um, so yeah, the big question here is: Can we see Bitcoin sl sliding back down again towards these uh, lows that we saw here in March? And uh, the big question here is: Will will it be able to stay here? For now, the it seems that the crypto is coiling up here. Um, but if we jump in. Into a month, uh, into a four-hour chart, you can see that today, this morning, um, <clears throat> today we had a bit of a slide here, a move back to the 200 EMA on the four-hour chart. Now. In a way, of course, uh, all this activity is kind of a bit of a tricky one right now. I mean, for us to get excited about the higher levels, we still would like to see a push above the 7,454 zone. Uh, this is the uh, the current highest point of April. And uh, after a break of this level, then, yep, we will aim for some higher levels. Because, um, again, uh, let's not forget that um, for now, it's I would say it's even ranging. It's really difficult to kind of f find uh, a good kind of level here here somewhere but um, it, or should I say it's difficult to find a good uh, or a clear direction um, now again with uh, with this right now with all the cryptos uh, they are quite tricky um, and uh, in a way what you could do is just keep an eye on some of these levels like for example one of the one of which is this one right here um, near the 6,536-35 zone, roughly around there. Uh, that's kind of near the lower side of this little range here. Um, if we get a drop below this, then yes, we will aim for further declines. Um, however, uh, for now, it's it's really in no man's no man's land, and uh, in a way, it's kind of stuck here between these two uh, these two levels. And let me just quickly adjust this. There we go. And uh, it's stuck below this uh, 7,454 zone, and also stuck below above the um, 6,536 territory. So basically, wait for a clear breakthrough one of these areas, and then we could consider a further short-term directional move. Because again, it's um, if we put a daily chart again, you can see that basically we're still in an, on a downtrend overall in a bigger picture. So even if it travels higher here, yes, it could move a little bit to the upside however it could get a hold up near this downside line so something to keep in mind something to consider guys so yeah let's see how this is going to play out um AUD USD so here the situation is very very tricky looking at this daily chart now previously i've talked about some of these lines so the downside line this take this one taken from the high of the first of january continues to kind of stay intact uh, but the short-term upside support line got broken and as you can see now it's really kind of uh trading just kind of around it basically so we can get rid of it and because this is no longer in a way uh painting or should I say helping us uh, so here what we're going to do now is you can see that uh, previously I talked about this level here the six, uh, 0 0.6214 14 zone um, after a break of which we could consider uh, further declines however um, given that this pair uh, found very good support around here as you can see near this 0 0.6312 so what we could do here is we could start examining this little area because as you can see um, it lately acted as a fantastic area of support it, even though we did get overshoots here uh, still neither of the daily candles managed to close below it they came close but they never managed to close below this territory so that's why we would prefer to probably or just we will say i'll say that uh, we will start considering a little uh the downside if we get a nice decent drop here below this territory below the 0 0.6312 and if we get a nice De decent daily close below it as well so then yep we could consider some deeper extensions to the downside maybe even going all the way here back towards this 0 0.60 zone so but again 
for now uh, be very careful um, of course yes uh, overall we are still let's say more bearish than bullish but in order to get comfortable with the downside we need to see a drop below this territory right here the 0 0.6312 in terms of the the upside we would prefer to see a break of this downside line and a push above this uh, the high of last week near the 0 0.6445 zone and then we could consider some higher levels for now it's um, even if we see a push higher here, uh, this downside line may provide resistance. And uh, even let's say if we could see a bit of a, uh, an overshoot here, uh, wait for uh, a daily close above it. Because if we don't get a daily close, we do get an overshoot, but we don't get a daily close, then yep, um, this could mean that the, uh, well, the bulls are re not really ready to push this one higher. Uh, GBPUSD. So here it's uh, we are having a bit of weakness here in the in the British pound. Um, I talked about this pair uh, last week, and basically what I was saying that um, all eyes are on this 1.2485 territory. Um, you can see that we've managed to kind of close on Friday slightly above this territory, but this morning we're seeing a, a slide. Um, well, I mean. Again, the close it wasn't really that confident enough, I would say, and uh, we're seeing a bit of a decline right now. However, the day is not finished yet, so let's see if this is not going to end up being a false breakout. Because, as you can see, the pair the pair has found a bit of support near this 21 day EMA on uh, shown as the yellow line. So in a way, as you can see, it drifted lower. It's um, it tested this territory. And now it's kind of rebounding a little bit. Now, the big question here is, as I said, can it remain below this territory, below the 1.2485? If it can, then, yep, we will carefully start uh, considering deeper extensions to the downside. But if this is going to be uh, seen as a false breakout and the pair drifts back by the end of the day, drifts back above this territory, then, well, I mean, maybe uh, not all is good in the uh, in the bear block. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, GBP Aussie. Now, this one is a very interesting one because, I mean, we're approaching this key area um, last time when I talked about GBP Aussie was uh, what I was saying that in a way if this upside support line taken from the low of the 30th of July if it provides uh, if it holds the rate from moving lower then we could see a nice rebound and uh, uh, but uh, and we could see some higher levels but what I was also mentioning that if we get a nice decent push above this barrier here the 0. Point, uh, sorry 1.9868 uh, zone roughly around there if we get a nice daily close above this then yep we could maybe aim for higher levels however we did get only a small little overshoot here and then it still failed to kind of close above this territory above this level and this level by the way is the low of the 31st of March uh, this year, of course, um, and as you can see, that it failed to move above it and failed to stay above it, and it drifted lower. And now it's very close again to its upside support line. But the most important is that it's again it's testing this level here, the low the low of the 24th of March, which is which is around the 1.95 uh, 23 zone here. So um, the big question here is, can it? stay above it and if it can then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher however if we do see something like that still still i would say that we need to see a nice good daily close at least above this 1.9868 zone and then we could consider higher levels at the same time if we do see something like this this would also place uh the the rate above its 21 ema here on the on the daily chart so uh this one shown as the yellow line so more bulls could see this is a good opportunity to step in but for now now we are closer to this upside support line. Let's see if it can hold. Um, if it fails to do so, um, don't rush into this yet because ideally in order to aim for lower levels, we would like to see a drop, a nice good drop below the 1.9291 um, zone, roughly around there. That's the low of the 4th of March, or in other words, the lowest point of March. And then, yep, we could consider deeper extensions to the downside for now. Uh, we're just continue. We're just monitoring this one and observing this one. Uh, USD CAD. Now here, I've talked about this morning. Uh, about I've talked about this pair this morning. Um, what I was saying that in a way for us to get comfortable with higher levels, it, we need to see a push above this barrier right here, the high of last week, uh, near the 1.482083 zone. So um, it did push higher. The pair did push higher, but 
didn't kind of reach this barrier yet. So basically for now we're neutral. So although we are trading above this uh, short term tentative downside line, uh, which recently, as you can see, acted as a good trampoline here for the um, for this pair still to get a little bit more excited with higher levels, we would like to see a push above this barrier right here. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, in terms of the downside, we'll take a very conservative approach and uh, wait for a drop below the uh, the current lowest point of April, which is around the 1.3856, um, so around here. And then, yep, a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, more sellers could be joining in. Um, Euro USD. Finally, this one here is um, well, it's pushing, it's trying to push higher. But again, let me just jump into a four-hour chart. This is what I talked about this morning. Basically, it's in no one in, in no man's land. It's below this short-term tentative upside support line uh, taken from the low of the 22nd of March, and it's above this short-term tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 8th of March. So, in a way, it's just kind of stuck here. And uh, what we need is we need to see a clear drop through one of uh, uh, well a, a clear break through one of the highlighted areas here either a drop below the 1.0777 which is the lowest point of february and also acted as a good area of support here back in in april in the beginning of april um and uh yep or i would say uh we would need to see a push above this barrier right here the 1.0953 and then we could maybe start considering some higher levels uh this is the the area where the rate would be placed also above the 200 ema on the four hour chart and well more buyers could see this one maybe is a good opportunity to step in however for now it's nowhere it's just stuck there and uh yep for now we're just observing it and watching it so guys um i really hope you found it useful and uh, just a re quick reminder that um tomorrow there won't be any traders espresso nor tea time so we'll resume on wednesday um but yeah guys i hope you stay safe be very careful with oil and uh, you can see that oil is dropping lower it continues to slide and and to be honest i mean it seems that we could actually reach that uh, level, the 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 10.65 zone. But let's see if it can happen today. If it can, well, it would be quite interesting. We are we we are living through historic uh, times right now because, as you can see, last time the these levels were met were back in 1999 and 1998 so yep uh, well i'm not going further here i mean we were here uh a while ago uh, before that as well but um yeah uh keep your eyes on this guys for now keep your eyes on the lowest point of 1998 um that's the uh, that's around 10.65 and uh, yep let's see if it can contest that area maybe even today so I hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And uh, like I said, I'll see you on Wednesday. Um, catch my video on Wednesday, my Trader's Espresso. And uh, yep, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. And bye-bye.